Welcome to the Bridge Church Midweek Podcast. We exist to connect people with others and God. We hope this week's episode helps you do just that. Enjoy. Hey, Bridge Church. This is Pastor Tyler Wolf. I'm the pastor of our Okatomowoc campus, and welcome to the Midweek Podcast. I'm here with my new friend, as of a few months ago, Maddie Krenz. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. I uh, I remember meeting you for the first time at our Okatomowoc campus, and I feel like you showed up and just never left. Yeah, I feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's a good thing for us. Um, so tell us about who you are, how long I shared it. I spilled the beans on this a little bit. How, who you are, how long you've been coming to Bridge Church, how you found us, just that sort of thing. And uh, if you serve somewhere, where do you serve? All right. So I'm originally from Waukesha. Um, I'm 19 years old. I just graduated uh, high school a year ago. Um, I work in the emergency services profession. Um, I started going to Bridge three months ago. Uh, and I started, I believe, uh, about midway through August. And ever since then, like, I really haven't been able to leave. I've been uh, addicted to it, which is not a bad thing. Um, I live in Oconomowoc now. That's how I found the Oconomowoc campus. So I walk a lot downtown and was walking and going through some stuff in my life. And I walked past Bridge about, I don't know, probably 30, 40 times. And (laughs) one Sunday I was like, I should try this place. And I decided to walk up those 20 stairs in a bridge. And here I am now three months later and still loving it, addicted to it. And it's changed my life. So yeah, we love having you there. Our family loves having you there now. More specifically, when you say you're in, how did you state your job? Emergency response services. Yeah. So what does that mean more specifically? Um, so I work as a I work as a firefighter um, full time, or I'm like part time at three different departments. Oh, gotcha. And then um, also a EMT, and I'm soon to be a paramedic. So I'm excited. Only three more weeks of schooling. So. Wow, that's awesome. And recently you joined a team at Bridge Church. Tell us about where you serve. Yeah, I um, just started serving a week ago on the medical team, um, yeah. and I also am a greeter, so you'll get to say hi to me in the mornings when you walk in, yeah. which could be a good or bad thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> well, I love it. I, I mean, you've told me that when you came to Bridge Church for the first time, you just felt really welcomed in, and I love it when people who once felt welcomed for the first time then become the welcomers. I think that's really important for us to always take what we've been given and give it back out to the world around us, to the people around us. So, I mean, we didn't have to twist your arm on that at all. I mean, you just jumped right into that, which we appreciate. Yeah, I was excited. It's it's awesome place. So, and I felt so welcome from the time I walked in and there's so many comments and like things that people said that just stuck out to me of like, they met me for the first time and they could see me three weeks later and they knew my name and they knew who I was and they were excited to have me there. And I want to you know, give that back to people when they walk in. I want people to feel the exact same way that I did. That's cool. So you have a story to share. And scripture tells us that uh, we can be overcomers by the blood of the lamb. So that's Jesus, by the gospel, what, who he is and what he's done. And also by the word of our testimony. And what that's telling us is that when we are willing to share our story, that there's power in that. And when we share our testimony, it's one of the best ways we can encourage fellow believers around us. And that's what this podcast is all about, building the faith, making disciples out of people, and encouraging the body. So I'm just going to kind of pass it off to you. Would you just kind of share, start as far back or as soon as early, as just go back as early as you want, start as late as you want. What's your story? What has God done in your life? Well, it's crazy because there's so much to it, but I'm going to kind of condense it down and Keep it short. Um, Sure. So about two years ago in high school, I got involved um, with protective services. um, And I have kind of a backstory on that. So when I was younger, actually, I experienced just a um, unfortunate childhood trauma. um, And unfortunately, it kind of threw me for a loop uh, when I was younger. And I kind of lost a lot of trust with humanity. So I was like, it was really unfortunate that, you know, I lived in a really safe neighborhood. And that one small thing um, really affected me. And it actually didn't start affecting me until now, seven years later. So it happened when I was 12. I'm now 19. Sure. So seven years later, all of a sudden, I realized it's affecting me. Um, but it sparked me into wanting to help others. So two years ago, um, my senior year, it's about two years now, um, my senior year of high school, I got involved in emergency services. There was a program to get my firefighting and EMT um, degree while I was in high school and get that completed. So I was like, heck yeah, 
you know, free schooling, it was awesome. So I completed um, my firefighting certification, two different ones, and then my um, emergency medical technician in high school. I then graduated high school and things were great. I got my first like full-time position at a fire department, started working, loved the job, but um, didn't really realize that all of the you know, experiences in the field were going to throw me for the same feelings that I had when I was younger. Like it was like a trigger almost. Yeah. And I loved my job and I love connecting with people. And I have learned, I learned so much. Every single person that I interact with in the community, I learned something new from. And that's what I love about my job. But I had no idea that these experiences or, you know, these intense calls were going to throw my mindset into the same way that I felt when I was younger. And, um, how I can describe it is this feeling of being unsafe. Like you have nowhere to go and in that time you're trapped and no one's there to help you. There's nothing you can do. Um, and I lost a lot of hope and humanity from a few you know, bad calls on the job. Um, some experiences that I had dealt with with some of my friends. Um, you know, being in the, in the firehouse or just being in that profession, you hear about all of these different terrible things. So you kind of just start to be like, humanity's terrible. I don't, you know, you lose this drive for the job. And my drive was, you know, to help others, not (laughs) learn to hate people. Or, you know, at the time it was like, yeah, I was nervous about every single person I interacted with. And I was always thinking the worst of people. That starts to like eat at your mind after a while. You go on these calls and it's like every day you're being surrounded by it. Um, So now, you know, I had all these experiences and somehow I still was like, let's go get my paramedic degree. Um, You know, let's jump into it. Let's, you know, strive to get a full-time job. So I started my paramedic schooling. And for people that don't know, I'll just give a little short description of like what that means. So that's like a year long of schooling and hundreds of hours in hospitals. You're in, you know, trauma rooms, ERs, you're in the operating rooms. Um, You go and do like you see deliveries of babies, like all of the, all of these different amazing experiences Um, so it's like exciting stuff to go and, you know, get this. It's like becoming an on the go ER doctor is really how I describe it. And I was so excited to start. Um, so I started in January of, uh, 2021. Um, I believe it was January 18th that I started at the same time I had just met, um, uh, my current boyfriend and I moved out of my parents' house. So I had that huge life change. So I moved, I started paramedic school. Um, all of these crazy things going on at once. And at the same time, I had just experienced a couple um, pretty intense calls on the job. Yeah. And I was like, I'm fine, you know, I'm doing great, living life, going to school, whatever, just moved out. And um, there was just all of a sudden out of nowhere. I was coming home after school and I was just like broken down. I was anxious all day and I would describe it as like, I'm zigzagging all over the house, just constantly either cleaning, doing homework. I was like hyperactive all the yeah. time, not sleeping well, um, not really eating my best, not, you know, working out like I used to. And I was actually like not really keeping, you know, weight on. I was just keeping at the same weight. So it was just not very a healthy lifestyle. And all of a sudden it started catching up to me. And I was like, every single day I was coming home and breaking down and I was doing it on my own. And it was a silent, it was a silent battle. Yeah. And then it was affecting me with every other aspect of my life. I was, you know, negative towards other people. I wasn't having passion for my paramedic. I wasn't studying like I used to. I wasn't, you know, even people who hear my story or whatever are going to, like, my friends that hear it, they're going to be like, I didn't even notice because I was putting on this mask. Sure. Um, But then I would come home and I'd just break down and just, it was just crazy. Like, I had never experienced anything like it before. I felt completely alone. Um, it was scary. Like that's the best way for me to describe it. It was completely hopeless and I was just sitting against a wall and just panicking. I couldn't move. And this would happen for like an hour, probably three to four times a week. Wow. So you think about that, it's just, it eats away at you after a while. And at one point I was like, I just, I don't know how much longer I can do this. Like I'm, I'm done with life right now. I just, I'm over it. There's no hope. There's nothing going to change. And I just was not seeing any good at all. I wasn't seeing, you know, how far I've come, all of the things I've accomplished, the family that I have, the support. And most importantly, I really wasn't seeing any form of faith in my life. Um, And I used to have, and I'm glad to have it back. I used to have a a strong faith. I grew up going to church. Um, I was baptized when I was really young. I was confirmed 
all my tattoos on my body are all faith driven. I have a strong faith. And in those times sitting against a wall, I never saw, you know, that there was a light. There was a reason to keep holding on. Um, and I see it now, but something every single time I had one of those breakdowns kept me going. Hmm. Um, there's, there had to be something cause there's no way that someone who doesn't have God with them or doesn't, you know, have any sort of faith would have been able to get through that in my opinion. Um, sitting against that wall and just over and over and over again, one of those times it was going to go far enough where there was going to be no chance after that. Yeah. Um, and so that was, that was hard. And I, you know, wasn't really talking to anybody about it. Um, then I finally decided one day I just was completely done um, at my wit's end. So I decided to go to the doctor um, and say like, I'm anxious. I'm having these panic attacks. Um, I was just given a prescription, like, you know, here's a prescription. Let's just, let's just do it like that. You know, no talk about counseling, no talk about anything. So handed me a prescription and um, gave me something that just wasn't going to fix what the true underlying problem was. Mm -hmm. So I tried that for a while. Um, I couldn't take it when I was on the job while I work all the time. So (laughs) it was really no fix. Right. Um, So I continued to really struggle and just, it was just getting worse and worse and worse. And then there was just like one day I made this decision to just email a counselor and it just changed. It changed after that. It started getting better, but it still was worse. Every, you know, couple of days I was still getting these relapses of just in that dark place again. Um, There was a time where I was on the floor of my, um, of my apartment by myself there was one day I was like completely at my wit's end and I actually called my dad and I like never talked to, you know, I never talked to them about it. And I was just like, I can't even get up to go to class. And I was 30 minutes late to my paramedic because of that. So, um, that was a big deal because being late to class, it's not really allowed in the program I'm in. Yeah. Um, so just like even that just really struck me. The fact that I had to call my dad and talk to him and get him to talk me through getting up off the ground. Hmm. Um, so I just knew something had to change, something had to give, and I just wasn't seeing it. Um, and I, a lot of times I would just walk, you know, or do whatever to try and help with my anxiety. And uh, like I said, I was walking all the time downtown. And just this one Sunday, I was like, I should I have seen these orange flags. I was like, oh, Bridge Church. Like, I've heard of that place. I wonder if I'd like it. And a couple Sundays, I just walked past and was like, eh, maybe not this Sunday, maybe a different Sunday. And then there was just one one week I said to um, my boyfriend at home, I said, I think I'm going to try that church on Sunday. I think I'm going to go and I'm going to try it. Um, and it was just me because uh, he was working. And so I decided to to go. And it's like all of a sudden there was just this switch like this. All of a sudden I just could see the positive again. And, and counseling was helping a little bit, of course. Yeah. But all of a sudden that counseling was had more meaning. I, I was seeing, you know, after I walked in a bridge, I was all of a sudden seeing this flip and seeing the positives. Um, And it wasn't even at that time. My biggest testimony, the biggest time that changed everything for me, I had a pivotal moment, and that moment was She Worships. That That was my night. That was the night that literally changed everything. And what's fascinating is I, I always look back at this and I'm like, thank God I woke up and went to that. Um, because what happened was, is that day I was just exhausted from my week. I ended up accidentally falling asleep on my couch, knowing that I, I had She Worships that night. Mm-hmm. And I woke up and I remember looking at my phone and I think it started at six and my phone said 630. I said to myself, I go, oh my gosh, I'm missing She Worships. So I got up, I changed super fast and I drove you know, the 30 minutes out here to catch however much of time I could as she worships. And I walked in, I had no idea what was going on. Um, and all of a sudden they started doing worship, worshiping during that time. And they, I think it was the song rest on us. And I all of a sudden just broke down, like just bawled my eyes out. I like couldn't stop. Like it was just a flow of emotion. And, um, I was just crying and crying and crying. Cause it like hit me at that time. Like I'm here. I'm here today. I'm stronger than I was before. I'm choosing these hard things. I'm fighting this battle and I've got this awesome higher power with me now. And I got this like all of a sudden it just hit me and it was, it was crazy. Like I can't even describe it, but I just broke down so hard. Um, and I just like, I don't even know what it was, but it just was like a pivotal moment. And then that night, um, the speaker said, uh, she said, you know, 
as long as you're breathing, you have a purpose. Or as long as I make you breathe, you have a purpose. And like that has resonated with me since um, because it's like, I never even thought about that in my darkest times, you know, in that, in that moment where I'm sitting against a wall, broken down with no hope in life that even just because I'm breathing right now, I have a purpose. I'm yeah. here for a reason. And I see that now and it's just, it's crazy how much that little, like that just 30 minutes of that night changed my life. Um, and I realize now how much God was working in the times that I was in that dark place he was still working because like I said, I still had that little bit of give that just kept me going. Like there was something that just made me get up off that ground every night and say, you've got it. You got to make it till tomorrow. You got to just, you got to keep getting up in the morning and you got to keep doing this because you're going to make it and there's going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and I, I don't think that that was just my mind. That was definitely, definitely God working in my life um, without me seeing it. And in the middle of all of that, I think it was in May, I had gotten a tattoo on my arm and it's a palm tree and the Bible verse is about being rescued. It's from Isaiah. And I had gotten it thinking like, if I get this on my arm, it's going to change my life. Like the ocean's my happy place. Cause I would be sitting against a wall broken down. I'd be like, I just want to go to the palm trees. Like that's what I want to do. And I want to be rescued. And I was just like hoping so hard in my mind. And there were times too, where I was wondering like, why is God putting me through this? And now I look at it as, I honestly, I wouldn't change what I went through because now I come out of this and it's like, I found bridge. I found this family. Um, I'm rebuilding these relationships with my, my own family and I'm not irritable like I was before. I've got God with me. I'm seeing more of the positives. Like they're just, I wouldn't change any of it, um, at all. And it's just crazy to me after all of this that I just, I wasn't seeing God through any of it. And then the moment I took just those 20 steps into bridge, like my whole life has changed ever since. And it's just been, it's been amazing. And I would say just about every Sunday, just recently, I finally stopped crying in church, but <laughs> I would say for the first like four or five times, I was glad that I wasn't bringing a guest with me every Sunday because yeah. I would bawl my eyes out. Yeah. Um, and going through all, all I went through, I never could show emotion. I was very emotionless. Um, Nobody ever saw me cry but myself. Like, sure. I may have cried against that wall, but outside of that, I could never just like break down with somebody and really truly say how I was feeling. Like, I was so ashamed of it. And I was so like, so like ashamed of everything I was going through. And it's crazy. Like, I meet someone at Bridge and we'll get talking about God and whatever. And then all of a sudden, like, I'm just, before I know it, I'm just spilling my story or I'm spilling my testimony. And it's just interesting how that works to me of, you know, I was ashamed before and all of a sudden now it's like, I'll show emotion in front of somebody. I'll cry. I'll cry in church. Like I'm willing to just be open and honest about what I went through. And I just, you know, I just am like really, I guess, proud and in general, just like happy that I can just see the good now um, and that I can actually see God working in my life. Yeah, it's incredible. And it's not just you that can see God working in your life. The people around you can see it. And when I hear your story, I think about, um, you know, I think about a person, if they lived in a town that, let's say, they hated, or they worked a job that they hated, and they go, man, I would do anything to get out of this job, or I would do anything to get out of this town. If they had close relationships in that town, if their best friend lived in that town, or worked at the job with them, no matter how frustrating the job was or how much they wanted to get out of that town, it would be so hard to leave because those relationships tether them. They go, man, I don't care how much I hate this job. I'm not leaving that person. And in James, the book of James chapter 2, he describes Abraham as a friend of God. And Jesus is our Lord. He is God. We surrender our lives to him. He's, uh, God is described as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's a, there's a fatherly element there. But we also have to see that God also encompasses that relationship, a friend, just like Abraham was called a friend of God. And, you know, I see you telling your story of you're going through this season where um, you're living in that town, so to speak, working that job, so to speak, where it all became bearable because your problems don't disappear. But as that relationship, that friendship with God appears... Um, he, his Holy Spirit has a way of comforting us. 
and carrying us through those things and walking through those things side by side. You've probably heard me say it on a Sunday morning. Jesus suffered for us and before us. And so now that there's now that he's done that, there's no suffering we can walk through that he doesn't first relate with. And so, I, uh, what, again, to wrap it up, like what I love about your story is it's not that the suffering disappears, but it's that you realize now that you're not alone because God is with you. You've, you've called him your Lord and Savior, but you also have plugged into a community for God to work through. Our vision at Bridge Church is we exist to connect people with others and God. And the reason that we say it in that order is because sometimes the number one way that God will connect with us is through others, is through community. And that's why we do what we do. That's why we work so hard on these Sunday morning gatherings. That's why we put together bridge groups is because God wants to work through his people. You've heard, you've heard me say this again before. We, he could do it all on his own, but he lets us be a part of it. And so he's worked in your life through your connection with others, through your connection with this community, and he's also going to work through your life to connect other people through their relationship with you. So how do you connect with others in God at Bridge Church? I connect in a lot of ways, and that's one of the things that you just pointed out, actually, is one thing I forgot to touch on, um, just to wrap it up, too, is sure. suffering, yes. I actually, a couple, just about a week ago, I all of a sudden just had a few days that were really, really hard. Like, my paramedic is in the full kick right now. I've got my big national registry exam coming up, and after a year of suffering, a year of all of this hard work, there's a lot of pressure on this exam right before the holidays. Um, but it's crazy because my mindset has changed. Um, like before I'd be like, oh, I'm, you know, failure, 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 like all these things. And now I'm like, whatever happens, happens. And there's a reason God's doing what he's doing. And I noticed last week even how quickly I could bounce back from the moments of being in that hole again of like, I'm, you know, I'm stressed, I'm anxious. And all of a sudden I could just flip the switch. And before I couldn't do that, it would just wreck my whole day. And now it's like, there's this different uh, switch that is flipped, but it has to do with the connections on Sunday mornings and the things that are said. Um, and one of the things that I always love that said is, um, there's always a seat for you at our table. And to me, that means so much because just the power of sitting at a table, even the firehouse, like that's a big, that's a big thing, the, the kitchen table. Like mm. we spend our meals together there. Um, that's where we, you know, talk about our families. That's that's where those connections happen, and it's the same thing in the church. So I can I can relate that 100%. Um, and at Bridge, ever since I started, um, I've had just an amazing outpouring amount of support. I got invited to She Worships. I've connected with all the pastors, some of the families. I got invited to coffee one of the mornings before church. Just everyone cares. And um, I'm going to dinner coming up with some people from church, and it's just like that community just keeps building and building. And I'm finding that I'm putting more and more things on my calendar, um, <laughs> my very busy calendar yeah. for things with bridge. But I'm finding that that is so important in finding myself and finding my relationship with God is, you know, taking those times to spend time with people from the church because they're going to help me mend and build that connection even more. Um, so, yeah, it's doing amazing things. I'm actually getting baptized, um, re-baptized on December 1st. Yeah. Um, and I relate that to that imperishable seed in my heart that is just regrowing and I, I want to remake that commitment and you know that reborn again Christian and that's that's the big reason behind it so those yeah. are some of the ways that bridges you know connecting me with God I love it well thanks so much for sharing your story we love having to be a part of our church family and thank you so much for being courageous enough to share your story well thank you so much for having me